as you can see, I've got enough room to sit up and the ridge line is only about sort of six, eight inches above my head. So, uh, you know, plenty of comfort really. So at the moment I'm wearing my through night head torch which I featured the last time I was here. Obviously the camera doesn't do it justice to how far I can see um, where I've just come down from the ridge line of the tarp. But I've also acquired recently their little charging stick, which is a five volter. You can see there's a little light flashing there. It starts off blue when it's fully charged. There's a little button there that you switch on when you want it to charge your device. So my phone was going down to about, I think it was about 7% and I was getting the alert to charge it. I've used it to take some photographs, done some social media pictures since I've been out over the past couple of days. Um, I keep my phone, I use my phone just for those reasons or emergency. Not to sort of phone every Tom, Dick and Harry, because um, <laughs> that's not why I come out in the great outdoors. But I always want the phone for backup. I think it's really important. So I've just recently acquired one of these new gizmos that uh, Through Night have just produced. It's actually got a battery that's in it that's specifically for this unit. So basically you can charge this up as a stick recharge unit for, as you can see, my phone, but you can get a whole load of other batteries and when, if and when this battery that's in here ran out, you can replace it with the other one that you might have spare that's already recharged. Um, these are functioning actually, or this one's been functioning, I've been using it now for about a week. First time I've brought it outdoors. Um, it's now saying with the flash, or not saying, but for the indication of the light, when you read the instructions, it starts off blue, it goes into flashing blue, then it goes into sort of like a mauvey red colour, which it is now, which means it's about halfway capacity, and it's charged my phone up nearly 40%. So that's pretty good, and that's in just about, just under an hour. So I reckon I've got just about a little bit left in this, which might charge it up to about 60, 70% which isn't too bad at all from this single little unit, which takes up to uh, five volt little units like iPhones and your mobiles and this sort of thing. So I'm quite impressed with this. I've kept it in this pocket because it's not a massive, great big charging unit and it stays close to my body. All right, so it's not thermal pocket, but at least it's better to keep against me in my pocket whilst on me. So I've got access to it. Plus as well, it charges more effectively and the unit itself as in any form of battery, whether it's single, uh, AA battery, single A, triple A batteries, or recharging unit, anything that has a power source in it functions better when it's kept warm. And as you probably know, charging units, as I say, batteries or anything like this, can start to lose their power and not function as good uh, in low temperatures. But the spec on this, I'll put a few specs up on it. Anything that has the USB connection, you can charge it up. So you might even have a phone lead that charges up your phone, will actually charge this, or you can connect it to your laptop, computer, and it can charge at the same time. There's the mini USB, which at the moment is obviously plugged into my phone. But if you put that small USB, the mini USB, into the small slot, then of course the bigger USB plug will actually go into whatever source is charging this unit. Makes sense. Similar to a lot of um, principles behind mini USBs and your normal USB connection leads. You can charge this up and then swap the ends of the lead around to charge up a unit, just like I'm doing now. So I reckon I'll keep that going for about another I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. That will take me up to about 20% more that I've got on the phone and I'll probably take a couple more pictures of my low profile shelter and stick that on Instagram and Facebook. <laughs> All good stuff. Good little bits of kit to have.
course as outdoors enthusiasts and getting back to nature and doing this sort of activity um, it's good to rely on not, not sort of loads of techno stuff sort of glamping type kit but it's good to have things for you know for safety um, you know if there's an emergency and you need to use your phone contact people as a last resort then it's always great to have your phone with you keep it in a waterproof bag I've got a little waterproof just like um, the wet dry bags that I use in the canoe a miniature one small one that the phone can actually go in but I don't spend all my time um, you know doing all the contacts via the internet because obviously that's not why I come outdoors I like to share my activities a lot of people are interested it inspires them to get outdoors uh, I sometimes have a flashbulb idea while I'm out I think oh yeah I could try something in a different way where I take the picture and then upload it and it helps other people if it gives them advice as well so that's the main reason why I have the backup phone and also this new charge unit which is the Thrunite the Thrunite C2 get it from Amazon or the Thrunite website I'll put some links up in the description box of this video Now I'm using the torch end of the lantern just to illuminate the head torch, the TH20, which is lightweight, got a very strong beam, it's got SOS. I did actually um, bring it to light, <laughs> excuse the pun, but I did actually feature it in a previous wild camp not long after I'd got it. Nice and compact, lightweight. Uh, takes a double A battery. Admittedly, the power is used um, quite quickly when it's on full beam, but the full beam it really illuminates like a massive, great sort of I don't know, sort of a 500 LED torch or something like that. Really impressive. But I've taken it down to a low light now, so it's just easy for me to see around me by about six foot radius. So that will save me a lot of power. So just featuring these two little bits of technical gizmo, because I'm always getting requests, um, inquiries over different bits and pieces that I acquire, so hence sharing some of the information, because whatever makes things practical and safe, and things that you can utilise outdoors, then um, you know if it helps you get on your travels, then you know that's all good stuff. It's now coming up to about 10.30 at night. And the sky now has cleared. There's a little chilly breeze in the air. There's no clouds in the sky. You can see the stars. It's forecast now, I think, to be dry for the rest of the night and then be welcomed tomorrow morning by sunny weather, even though the temperatures will probably be a bit dropped. So, from where I had the config, well, I've still got the config of the tarp low profile. As you can see where I was underneath, broad, wide-edged A-shape. I'm going to take it back up, I think, back to where it was. So right above the fire pit, which I'm now going to get going, a bit of warmth, a bit of cooking, will actually be clear. So the smoke can go straight up. Because I think while I'm actually going to be getting the fire pit active and doing some food, uh, there's going to be no rain. That fire pit brought to life. I've got some jacket potatoes marinated belly pork steak, red pepper and mushrooms to cook for a bit of midnight feast on this three day canoe wild camp extravaganza. <laughs> Welcome to my world people. Outdoorsy to the max. My usual little trick of the fire pit earth mounted up at the back there with just a couple of logs.